Okay, it's 10 o'clock. We will after 10, we will start the uh, Ways and Means <clears throat> hearing for Thursday, May 28th. Sharita, please call the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Present. Alderman Vicoro. <clears throat> Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderwoman Hubbard. Present. Alderwoman Murphy. Present. Alderwoman Spencer. Present. Alderman Muhammad. Here. Alderman Odenberg. Present. Alderwoman Boyd. Present. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Here. Chairman Vollmer. Present. Alderman Vaccaro. Present. For some reason it wouldn't unmute me. The present. <laughs> 11 present, you have quorum. I won't see you. All right. Thank you very much, Sharita. With that, we'll move for our motion to approve the minutes of yesterday's meeting on Wednesday. Uh, the 27th. So um, moved. Second. Entertain a second. Sharita, second. please call the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderman Vicoro. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Muhammad. <coughs> Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Chairman Palmer. Aye. 11 aye votes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sharita. We have uh, everyone is present, so we will no need to excuse any aldermen. With that, uh, we will move on. We'll, do we have the representative from the treasurer's office online, please? Our treasurer's office present? Yes. Okay. Who's, who's here from the treasurer's office today? Treasurer Jones. Oh, well, thank you, Treasurer. I'm sorry, I can't see. I have to flip around my screen. I apologize. <clears throat> so you may proceed. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Vollmer, members of the committee. Uh, I think also on the call is uh, my assistant, Treasurer Kyle Johnson, um, and possibly Jared Boyd. I don't see him, but I think he's on the call as well. Uh, we need to present our uh, budget for fiscal year 21. Uh, give you a brief overview of treasury operations. Uh, we do payroll and investments for the city of St. Louis. Oh. Someone please mute. Pardon me, STL, we have a lot of feedback going on. I can't hear Treasurer Jones currently. Um, that seems to be Alderwoman Boyd. Um, I think she's using two different devices. Needs to turn the speakers off on. Only the microphone and speakers on the same device can be used. Okay, are we ready to continue? All right, now I can see you, Charger Jones. Hello there. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, again, um, just a brief overview. Um, our payroll department was is remained essential during the stay at home orders and also completed uh, garnishments. Um, we also do bank account re reconciliation and administration. We work closely with the comptroller's office and other, several city departments setting up their bank accounts. Um, we also do non pension investments, uh, longer term investments with our investment advisor PFM. 
Um, we've also been able to shift some monies to uh, interest bearing uh, accounts or higher performing accounts with uh, city depositories. Um, and also um, uh, the, the Office of the Treasurer includes the Office of Financial Empowerment uh, where we've had several classes. Obviously, we've had to shift to online during the pandemic, helping the unbanked and underbanked, improve, improving personal credit, um, as well as uh, several of our most popular classes, uh, helping those with student loans uh, and, and for, applying for the forgiveness program. Uh, the largest program in the Office of Financial Empowerment is, of course, the College Kids Program, which has over 16,000 children saving for post-secondary education. Um, and currently has about $1.1 million saved for post-secondary education. Uh, College Kids is one of uh, 65 programs in over 30 states across the country. And also the Office of Financial Empowerment includes our partnership with Operation Hope, where we have a full-time credit and money management counselor uh, who does nothing but help people improve their credit. Our One of our success stories from uh, 2019 was we had a client that started working with us in, in the beginning of the year and we increased her credit score by 250 points and she closed on her first home in December of 2019. I'm myself. <laughs> There's some feedback going on or echo somewhere, STL? I can't tell where that one's coming from. Somebody... Somebody must be listening on YouTube, maybe. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, the uh, onto our budget um, or during COVID, uh, we've transitioned most of our classes or all of our classes to virtual classes. Um, we've done uh, webinars with the Small SBA or Small Business Association. Uh, we had a, a, one of the first webinars about the PPP program with over 200 people. Our credit and money management counts, uh, classes are also online and we're doing uh, one-on-ones, obviously over the phone or via a teleconference. Uh, we've also done, um, uh, we do weekly, oh, God bless you, whoever that was. Uh, we also do weekly uh, uh, webinars uh, or through a web series called Tips with the Treasurer. Uh, some of the things we've covered include unemployment, mortgage forgiveness um, and forbearance, and as well as um, your rights as a renter. And we also continue our partnership with the St. Louis Public Schools. Uh, we've been able to pass out flyers uh, with the distribution of their weekly lunches uh, or weekly food uh, deliveries um, to help people uh, financially during this time. Um, On to our budget, uh, the majority of our budget is personnel. Uh, there are no raises with the exception of three parity pay parity requests. Uh, we did not participate in this year's bonus program. Uh, apparently the window closed for us before we were able to um, uh, put in a request for that. And then also um, there's, uh, we have one position that uh, the airport is going to share um, paying for uh, or pay for the salary and benefits of that, uh, that particular employee because a lot of, half of their work uh, is related to directly to uh, the airport and accounting and uh, reconciliation of their accounts. Uh, our other expenses uh, include uh, our, our uh, yearly um, collateral with uh, uh, Wells Fargo as well as office supplies. Um, so with that, I will open it up for any questions. All right, thank you very much, Madam Treasurer. We will uh, go by seniority. We'll start with the Vice Chair, Alderman Davis. Any questions or comments of the Treasurer's Office? I really don't have any questions. I'd just like to have a comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of the things that I'm very impressed with is all the programming that is centered around uh, our general population and helping them with a better quality of life. Uh, most of us know and understand that if we don't improve our citizens, our city cannot improve and thrive. Uh, we don't want people to stay where they are. We want them to have a better quality of life. So I just wanted to say that, and I thank you for your report. Thank you. All right, thank you, Madam Vice. Uh, Alderman Vicaro, any questions of the treasurer? Uh, no, Tashara, thank you so much. Um, 
I, my, my, I guess my only question, which I've asked everybody, the budget, the way you have it, the way that's presented to you, you know, keeping in mind everything so tight this year, is the budget workable for you the way it is? And can you survive it without any, or is there something that's just absolutely essential that you feel like somehow we need to figure out how to get back into your office? Uh, we could always use more staff, um, but, uh, um, and I'm sure our, our assistant treasurer can uh, attest to that. Um, there were a few, um, there still are a few things that we're trying to work out with the budget department. Um, there were some requests that I made, um, you know, we're, we're in an unprecedented environment. So uh, all of our staff are um, on a salary freeze, um, not even the one and a half percent um, that uh, the city's getting. Uh, the parking division is uh, all of our salaries are frozen. Um, and we saw that that was granted to treasury operations, even though we made a request to freeze their salaries. Um, but like I said, the only uh, salary increases were those uh, related to pay parity. We have three accountants on staff that um, we discovered um, weren't um, being paid at the same level as the accountants in the comptroller's office. So we made that request and it was granted um, for two, I believe, uh, uh, Ms. Johnson, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there were uh, uh, three accountants. We, we requested uh, pay parity for three accountants and I believe they granted two. So, so I mean, but it seems like you can sort of live, work within this budget this year, yeah. survive basically. this budget this year. Yeah, basically, yeah. Well, it's, I appreciate it's tight, but we'll survive. You're the best. I appreciate that. I really do. That that was really. It. I mean, it's just a tight budget, and and that's everybody's been pr pretty cooperative. You know, a couple felt that they had some things that were important. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Alderman. Thank you, Alderwoman Howard. I just want to remark on the the uh, presentation that you give to the public as far as a financial education. I think that's very important. Um, you know, as parents, we try to do that with our children, but sometimes that doesn't work out as well as having an objective outsider. You know, sometimes they stumble and they trip and, you know, it, it takes a little bit to recover, but I appreciate that. And I appreciate uh, the idea that you're able to tighten your belt and along with the rest of us. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. All uh, right, thank you, Alderwoman. And Alderwoman Hubbard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I would uh, like to thank the treasurer for coming. And uh, just on a, a side note, I, I will say that I was very impressed with your leadership as far as letting your uh, parking employers employees off uh, in light of COVID-19. That was very admirable. And I know many of my constituents appreciated that and I have noticed your willingness to go above and beyond and understand the needs of the city in regards to our budget and I hope that if there are additional resources that you may be able to offer in the future in light of this financial crisis that I hope that you would be more than willing to do that but thank you so much for your leadership during this time. Thank That's you. All, all right thank you Alderwoman. Alderwoman Murphy any questions of the treasurer? Uh, no, no questions. Thank you, uh, Treasurer. The, it, it all seems to sink. If you're happy, I'm happy. So no questions. All right. Thank you, Alderwoman. Alderwoman Spencer. Are we there, Alderwoman Spencer? I am. I'm, try I'm unmuted here. Uh, I have no all questions. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Why, thank you. That's unusual. First time this, this year. Thank you. All right. Uh, Alderman Muhammad, are we in the car or are we parked? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Madam Treasurer, uh, uh, for being here. Uh, I have a couple of questions and it's just, it's basic, um, it's real basic questions just for my own personal knowledge. What is the operating budget of the parking uh, division? Uh, as of the, the budget that was submitted uh, with uh, the streets committee to the streets committee uh, a couple of days ago, approximately 17 million and some change. 
Now, now is it is it is it accurate that when there is a budget shortfall uh, in your budget that's allocated from the city that you normally supplement that with parking uh, with parking division funds? Uh, that has been the case uh, for several years, even prior to my becoming treasurer. Uh, there, uh, the budget director has consistently uh, either denied or cut our budget. So, you know, we have to keep treasury operations going. We have to keep paid. We have to keep our investment paid. Uh, so, we have supplemented treasury operations uh, with equipment uh, necessary for them to complete their jobs. Uh, we've supplemented them with staff, uh, other accountants. Um, as well as um, other supplies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh, absolutely, and that's de and that's definitely uh, that's definitely understandable. So, why is it that? Alderman, Alderman Muhammad, did we lose you? Johnny, you still there? We're not hearing you. That's the LTV. Is he uh... still connected? He's not muted. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully there's no foul play. He's got his picture up. Um, Alderman Muhammad. He was driving, so maybe that has something to do with it. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll uh, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, we'll uh, we'll come back to Alderman Muhammad when we make re reconnect. If that's all right with you, Treasurer. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. It's the wonders of the world we live in right now. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Alderman Muhammad, if you can hear us, uh, as soon as you make a connection, just let us know. Uh, next on the list is Alderman Oldenburg. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Treasurer Jones, thanks for being here uh, this morning. Uh, I do have some questions, and maybe just following up on uh, Alderman Muhammad's line of questioning, how much, how much year over year is supplemented from the parking division to the treasury operations? Uh, last time we counted, it was approximately somewhere between two hundred to $250,000. Okay. That's annually or that was just the last transfer that you made? Uh, it's not necessarily a transfer. Um, it's, uh, you know, we would, we cover staff um, and, and would pay them through the parking division um, we also, you know, with our supply orders, uh, sometimes it's, if, if we're ordering supplies for the entire treasurer's office, we'll, you know, order for treasury operations as well, instead of just cut them out. Um, so it, you know, it all, it all depends. Um, but, you know, there was uh, the last year that I actually counted, you know, what we were uh, contributing, you know, outside of the grant that's uh, to the Office of Financial Empowerment, which is, you know, a non-operating expense line item. Um, it was somewhere in the range of about $200,000 or more. And just to clarify, add some clarification, Alderman Oldenburg, uh, there is an accountant that previous, previously was on uh, the parking division's budget that's been granted a transfer to Treasury this year. So it's a more accurate depiction of kind of what Treasury uh, needs in terms of accountants. These, we have two accountants that reconcile between them 34 accounts. Mm -hmm. um, so it just was never realistic to us to have one accountant that would be responsible for reconciling all those accounts, not to mention kind of segregation of duties that are required within the office. Um, so I, uh, this year, it is, we are uh, fortunate, I'd say, to have that uh, accountant transferred and recognized. There are some expenses that, you know, can be quantified. You know, I and our HR director work with both parking division and treasury and some of the staff that are in executive positions work across the entire organization. Um, but we're, we're technically parking division officials. Got it. Got it. Um, so, um, Treasurer Jones, you, you mentioned sort of the, this 
what what sounded like um, uh, the success rates and the um, the laudable goal of the Office of Financial Empowerment um, that's that's housed within the Treasury Treasury's Department or Treasury's Office. Um, you talked about sort of the enrollment um, and the different classes. What are the what are the sizes of those enrollment? Do they vary year to year, and do those do those come to you from um, banks, third party CDFIs who are trying to help their customers or clients build credit? Um, how large are kind of is a given class? And then what is? I'm just trying to understand what success looks like after the fact. Is it based on is there a graduation and um, you quantified like in one of your anecdotal examples, you quantified that the credit rating um, went north for one individual. What's what's I know you've you've got various partners, but what's where's the methodology associated with um, the success rate of the Office of Financial Empowerment? Um, so the the quick answer to your question is all of the above. Um, we have partnerships with several financial institutions, CDFIs. Um, across the region. And the class size depends on a variety of factors. Uh, it could be if it's at a, sometimes we partner with the YMCA and we tag on to an already existing class that they have and come in and do maybe a half hour to 45 minutes with a financial, uh, with a financial partner. So if it's an existing class, for example, we do a lot of outreach with uh, the elderly population at YMCA. So they have uh, a monthly meeting that we attend that has uh, upwards of 60 to 75 uh, senior citizens there for other information. And then we just, you know, insert a class into their normal schedule. Um, we partnered with um, the Bank of Edwardsville, for example, or Bank of Edwardsville is not in existence anymore. It's now um, uh, UC Bank. Um, they did a uh, six-week course, or um, which was, uh, they did a six-week course at a local elementary school where participants did get graduation, uh, did a, get a certificate, and um, also got uh, a $50 gift card, grocery gift card for their participation. Uh, funded by UC Bank, and I think it will also deposit into their children's savings accounts. Um, and that program had approximately 15 participants. You know, financial literacy isn't the sexiest thing in the world, and so sometimes it's difficult getting people to come to class. So we try to um, use whatever carrots we can to get people in the door. And then as far as metrics, uh, Operation Hope is the uh, one of the programs that gives us metrics on how our counselor is doing. Um, and I can pull up uh, one of the reports, uh, the most recent report for quarter one and share my screen with you. Give me one second and you can see for yourself uh, what some of the metrics are that we are um, uh, tracking for that. So if you'll see here, this is a quarterly report that we get from our partner at Operation Hope, which tracks the data uh, and performance of our financial counselor, uh, Reginald Garth. Um, and so he has goals that he's supposed to meet um, as a result of our relationship with Operation Hope. So his percent to goal, which is the number of clients he saw, was at 173%. Uh, total services 362, meaning 362 individual encounters for that quarter, and an, and an uh, increase of 17 points uh, for FICO scores. Um, and it also lists like of his uh, clientele, what the average household income is, um, how many, and also other demographics about his clientele. Um, you'll see that uh, 80% of his clientele is African American, um, and the uh, 20% is white. Um, also, here it shows his credit counseling enrollments, his follow up appointments, bank referrals, uh, credit and money management workshop participants, 
Disaster Preparedness Participants, which is a program that we participate in, EITC participants, and other education. And then um, there are graphs here that show uh, the services over time. So you can see his performance in uh, quarter three of 2019, quarter four of 2019, and then quarter one of 2020. Um, he's consistently been above goal um, in uh, his performance there. And then you also see like the impact here, a FICO credit score a increase of 17 points, uh, decreasing debt of over $8,000 and helping increase savings. Those are the things that we track. And that's per client or per individual. I mean, really, it's, it's an assessment. So the, the impact is an average. Per, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Treasurer Jones, can I add some additional data for you? Sure. Um, Alderman um, Oldenburg, um, also I'd like to add, this is Connie Johnson. Um, okay. Last Hi, year- Connie. Hi, how are you? I'm good, um, good to see you. Thanks. The OFE presented, organized, or hosted over 85 classes um, with over 1,200 participants. Um, in addition, we were proud to offer early morning uh, public student loan forgiveness courses for nurses at BJC Healthcare, as you know, as the nation's uh, 11th ranked hospital. Uh, this was one of our most popular offerings ever. Um, those classes had sometimes uh, over 100 nurses at seven o'clock in the morning to learn about the public loan forgiveness program. Um, due to the popularity of uh, that course, uh, our director uh, of the Office of Financial Empowerment, Lisa Gates, um, is poised to uh, organize additional financial education courses with nurses and additional um, uh, other medical providers at BJC. Uh, the treasurer also mentioned um, the fact that we have a very strong uh, senior audience um, in partnership with the YMCA. Uh, we have uh, presented uh, workshops uh, regarding pre uh, preventing elder fraud abuse um, at the Corona Lett YMCA, as well as the Monsanto YMCA and O'Fallon YMCA. Uh, before the pandemic, we had just started a partnership with St. Louis County government to offer financial empowerment programs to their employees, um, which means that more people in the region um, will be empowered to invest in themselves and our community. Um, over the past couple of years, OFE has participated in large scale community events, uh, including the back to school events with the Urban League and just last summer um, with the Monsanto Family YMCA where over 2000 children uh, were served uh, with um, back to school supplies. Um, another big event that we participated in uh, is called the Bringing It Together event that is sponsored by the Southside Wellness Center. Um, the treasurer did just show you the metrics for Operation Hope. Um, what we think uh, is of, of notable significance is that Reginald, when he offers um, in that report, you'll see that the average, um, the average participant's credit score went up 17 points. 17 points can make the difference between an approval and a denial of a loan, um, and particularly in this day and age. Um, we've had to switch to the virtual format, and for the record, Reginald does have um, a virtual credit money management seminar tomorrow. I hate to be one to shamelessly plug it, um, but it is a, still open and you can forward the link to your constituents or anyone else and see for yourself uh, his presentation, uh, which provides some uh, real time uh, advice to people, particularly um, right now. Um, in response to the pandemic, the OFE created a, a resource guide. This resource guide um, gives information about bills, um, summer camps, um, and just other resources, uh, food banks, anything that may be of additional assistance to people during this time of need. Um, it also highlights our alternative to payday loan guide, which is something the treasurer um, also initiated when she first came into office. 
um, to discourage predatory lending. That's something right now that people are really vulnerable to. Um, and so we try to provide information to people so that they will go to um, less predatory sources. And also, um, we also have a guide regarding second chance checking accounts as well um, that encourages people uh, to get a checking account, become banked, and not go to uh, check cashing places. Um, that is particularly important even for our city employees because during this pandemic, um, we did uh, have a mad push to try to get everyone on direct deposit. Um, we have decreased those numbers and we are currently working with our payroll provider, Regions Bank, um, that should something like this prohibit the city from um, being able to execute payroll, uh, Regions Bank may very well be able to um, process our payroll offsite. Um, it's still a work in progress. Um, Tyrell Rogers, our accounting manager, um, is kind of taking the lead on that, um, but we're working with them. Um, Regions Bank, as our payroll provider, is also working with the Office of Financial Empowerment um, to uh, provide additional financial education courses, not only to our employees, but also to their members. Um, so it's kind of a common theme. And I'd also like to add that this year along that theme of financial literacy um, with our college uh, kids participants, we had our first ever um, uh, deposit day. We always have family savings nights, which I'm sure you are aware of, um, particularly you, Alder Woman Hubbard, um, the family savings night, they take place right in your district at First Financial Federal Credit Union. Um, but this year we had the first ever uh, deposit day field trip with over 30 students from Merrimack. They got a chance to make deposits. They got a chance to talk to bankers and learn about their money. Um, this year we were also able to uh, have a private viewing of the movie, The Banker, which was sponsored by um, the Urban League and the Office of Financial Empowerment. Um, during this pandemic, we, uh, the College Kids Program sponsored a financial literacy series for students and their families um, to continue in the spirit of financial literacy. So just wanted to highlight some of those things to you so that you can see um, the common denominator um, throughout the Office of Financial Empowerment, whether it be um, offering a class at BJC, the College Kids Program, or Operation Hope, the common denominator is financial literacy, and we offer a variety of services and programs um, starting at the age of five, all the way up to 85. So it's, a, uh, you know, how, how do you measure that success? Uh, you know, it, it's hard, but uh, in the words of my MasterCard, we believe it's priceless. We believe it's priceless. So, um, how long have you how long have you guys partnered with Operation Hope? And and they're more focused on the on the I think the financial literacy and the and the and the credit credit building aspects, correct? Correct. Okay. They are so they they are focused on three primary metrics, first being improving credit, mm -hmm. second being reducing debt, and the third being increasing savings. But I would say that the movement of the improvement and movement of credit score is, is at the center of their mission because it ties into so many other opportunities. Uh, we've partnered with Operation Hope, what, five years, Treasurer? Has John Bryant come to St. Louis and visited your office? That's my question. Yes, Absolutely. he has. He, he, he was here um, when we opened uh, in 2015. Good. And he's been here several times since then. Good. And we do have autograph uh, copies of the book, The Memo, uh, from an event that he uh, participated in. I believe it was in 20, uh, was it in the 2018 Treasure at the library? Yeah, and and if you read and if you read the book, the memo, you'll find a story about me in it. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. about how we uh, have used parking funds for financial empowerment. Yeah, well, John's a hell of a good man. I know he him personally. Um, 
So, so but, that, but yeah, so Operation Hope, I, I, those three metrics, Jared, absolutely. But um, in terms of um, metrics of success around the um, college savings plan, who are we partnering with there um, and, and laying out that methodology? So our primary partner is um, what well, the, the accounts are held at First Financial Federal Credit Union. Mm -hmm. And um, our obviously our partners are St. Louis Public Schools and uh, the Charter Missouri Public Charter School Association. Um, and our metrics there um, are through uh, are, are through uh, Vista or through VistaShare, which is the uh, software we use to track all of the accounts. Um, we also get a report from uh, um, First Financial um, yearly that shows us how many students. Um, or families are taking advantage of other services offered by the credit union. Um, and we have found, uh, we found it in the first couple of years, uh, uh, approximately 300 additional accounts were opened uh, at the credit union by families, either for children to save for other children in their family or for themselves, uh, switching to from a, a large bank to uh, a smaller credit union or never having an inter any interaction with um, a uh, with state financial services and started uh, accounts for themselves. Um, the uh, so one so one measurable impact um, or outcome is that um, uh, families of of the of the students um, are being introduced to financial instruments and and credit building um, partners with first financial is that right? You know, with First Financial and other financial institutions, uh, because uh, like uh, I said earlier, Busey did a program uh, specifically for our families. Uh, we encourage other financial institutions to do programming with our families, uh, and Busey is the only one that's taken taken that uh, to, that has done it to this day. I think, uh, but did Connie did the Busey Bank partnership start with Bank of Edwardsville, or were those two separate programs? Um, those are two separate programs. Uh, the Bank of Edwardsville always had the, uh, the, the program with the children um, because it started with the uh, Urban, with Urban League. Um, but when they merged, um, then they kind of, they expanded the program, they increased the financial incentives. Um, and so that's why it was such uh, the success with college kids this year. And those those are just are those just interest bearing savings accounts that the um, that the that the um, one point one million dollars is that the total of that's kind of invested to date. I, I guess the investment vehicle for the college savings plans are just savings accounts at First Financial. Right, they're savings accounts, but they're non interest bearing because we don't have the children's social security numbers. Mm. They're open. The know your customer requirements is satisfied by using their student ID number. And to provide a little bit more context too, we have an, an opt out program, which uh, distinguishes our program from some CSAs that have opt in programs. Unfortunately, with opt in programs, you have far less participation, even with that very seemingly small hurdle of you know, providing social security number and other kind of pertinent information. So there is a trade-off and we, we want it to lower the barriers as much as possible to um, increase participation, particularly with um, such a low and such a high LMI population. Um, so folks that, like I said, in opt-in CSA programs, they have far lower take up rates uh, for the college savings programs. Is there an ability as, as I guess, trust between um, or relationship building between the financial institution and the client and the client's family that you can convert to an opt-in or that social security numbers will be provided that then, you know, there, there can be a little more interest being made because there's certainly probably a, a lesson learned there in terms of compounding interest um, as well in terms of its if, the importance of it as a financial instrument or derivative to savings. Right. So what we do is when when accounts reach uh, large levels, we then um, try to schedule an appointment with our 
529 counselor, Angela Williams, and uh, encourage families to start a 529 account for their child as well. Okay. Um, because, you know, we then lay out the, the differences in a, you know, traditional savings account versus an interest bearing savings account. But the, the goal is to introduce them to safe and healthy financial products. That's, you know, the entry point into the door. And then once we have them in the door, then we open up their, their universe to other products that can then earn interest like retirement accounts, 529s. And, you know, we're just increasing their financial capability one step at a time. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, so next moving maybe a little bit on, and I'm sorry, I just, I just have a list here and you guys are doing a good job of answering questions and I appreciate it. Um, has Nicole Galloway, uh, Missouri State Auditor completed um, her report and her findings um, from your office and it looked like there were a handful of findings um, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm just pulled this off her website this morning and it looks like probably half or so have been implemented of the recommendations. Can you speak to some of her findings in the office and um, where the implementation of those are vis-a-vis -vis the recommendations? Uh, Jared or Connie? Okay. Sure. I don't think she's finished her report, so we don't have an update to provide per se. Um, I can go to the website and see what. Alderman, I, I have not looked, um, I'm not privy. I haven't seen the report that you're referencing, um, but you know, the treasurer mentioned earlier that this office uh, has been short staffed. Okay, mm -hmm. and that parking has had to supplement this office. So um, let me put some color um, and context to whatever may or may not be on that website so that you understand and hopefully the members of the committee um, maybe better understand um, everything that goes on in this office with the amount of people that are in fact in this office. Um, so treasury operation consists of uh, a dedicated staff of eight employees who provide quality customer service to city departments. While most of you know us for payroll processing, which we are currently doing right now as we speak, um, we're more than just payroll. We are essential to the accountability of the city's finances, without which you would not be able to do your work on this committee. Um, we work closely with the Comptroller's Office to actively manage the city's operating and GOB accounts to ensure there's adequate cash flow to meet the city's obligations. Mm -hmm. We reconcile over 35 accounts with various city departments, including the city's operating account, um, city clearing, airport, water, and GOB accounts. Our office is responsible for over 100 million in cash and checks that are processed monthly through our cashier window by our cashier, Ms. Archell, who's held this position for over 30 years. And I might add, we are proud to report in FY19 and 20, um, there were no findings by internal audit and 100% accountability of all funds. Um, among the many achievements of this office for the past two fiscal years, Treasurer's Office has earned this city over $6 million in interest payments by working with our investment managers at PFM and by investing with some of our uh, certified city depositories. Um, the Treasurer's Office, uh, Treasury Operations, we closely manage and invest the trans funds. And for the past two years, our office has made strategic short-term investments um, that has allowed uh, uh, the city um, to yield high interest payments, uh, resulting in decreased transaction costs for this city. So for example, last year, the city borrowed $45 million. This cost, uh, the cost of this transaction is 1.6 million and some change. This office invested 45 million over 10 months and we made 1.3 million in interest. After transferring the initial payment of the debt and interest payments, we were notified yesterday 
by our trustees at US Bank that the city only owes $291,000. So through this treasury's due diligence, we were able to ensure that the city was not only able to repay its debt, but also pay for the expense of borrowing. All of this while trying to navigate through this economic crisis and global pandemic. So um, this is the second year in the row that we've been able to successfully um, make these short-term investments and make money for the city. Um, another thing that I might add is that the treasurer's office, uh, we have reduced bank fees by half a million dollars by utilizing electronic banking platforms to make operations more efficient. And this is that something that's absolutely critical when you are short staff. This is a manual operation with the city. Um, until we have an accounting system, um, so much of what we do is paper intensive. And so we have been relying on the electronic banking platforms. Um, and in 2017, the city was paying US Bank $240,000 a year in bank fees. And we were earning less than $5,000 in interest payments. Um, after working with um, our treasury management team at US Bank and restructuring our account services, the city now makes almost $350,000 and in interest, and we pay less than $5,000 a year in bank fees. We were successful in making similar restructuring deals with Bank of America and UMB. So, um, you know, when the auditors um, came in, you know, obviously they look for what you haven't done in their eyes. And we spent a lot of time trying to explain our processes, okay? If you could see my desk now, <laughs> you would see that it is intense with paperwork. With all due respect, the state auditors do not understand that so much of our process is manual. We receive paperwork from the comptroller. We receive paperwork from all city departments and we process it manually, okay? through the cashier's window. We have to upload it in a system called AIMS. And so much of this, because it's manual, is subject to human error, okay? But all that being said, we get it done and we get it done well. So okay. um, they called, they came to us at a time when we were short staff. Hi. Hi. And so, can, I, can I interrupt for just one second, just one okay. second. I think what Alderman Oldenburg is referring to is the um, report that's up on the auditor's website. Am I correct, Alder Alderman? Yeah, yeah, Treasurer. I mean, right. it just speaks to some processes, uh, finding around the competitive right. procurement process when you are shopping or are not necessarily following the competitive procurement process for finding um, uh, depository right. relationships. That's that's what I was referring yeah, to. Yeah, I pulled it up while while uh, Ms. Johnson was speaking, and of those things that we have uh, that are listed in progress, for example, uh, the procurement of depositories for city funds, uh, we've already implemented that, uh, and and that can be uh, 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 the most recent example was the transfer of the city's payroll account. Um, we did a, a fully open RFP process. Several banks. Um, applied, we interviewed them. It was a you know full open process. And at the end, Regents Bank was chosen to migrate our uh, account to. I think the next thing uh, was the reconciling. We all, we now, even though it's still a very paper intensive process and depends on other departments giving us information that we need, uh, we now have a tracker uh, that tracks all 34 open accounts that we are responsible for reconciling. That process has to be signed off on by the assistant treasurer, myself, or uh, Mr. Boyd to make sure that our accounts are now up to date and are currently up to date. Um, the other one, uh, the, the posting electronic deposits and RCF forms, that continues to be 
a, a, a problem because we are depending on information, uh, paper information uh, from other departments uh, in order to complete our job. And, the, and unfortunately, because as Ms. Johnson uh, stated so eloquently, we don't have an accounting system. We were uh, in the process of, uh, uh, with the supply division and, and other departments uh, trying to uh, do uh, implement a new accounting system or or trying to identify one, uh, but then COVID happened and then all of that money is just out the window now and has to be spent on necessary you know services. Um, I'm sorry, I'm still looking through the report to give you some follow ups on some of the other outstanding. Uh, Thank uh, you. But yeah, but those that are those most of those that are that are saying that they're implemented have now been, or in process, or have now been implemented. Okay. So real quick, I wanna come back just to um, the Operation Hope guys, cause I like those guys. Um, are they, do they have anyone, um, are they paying any, or providing any grant services for any operations or is anyone on staff? Um, I know that they do that sometimes. Is that is that at all in order to get you some more help? Are they paying for any position or or help? So no, we our our, our um, partnership with Operation Hope is paid for through our partnership with other financial institutions. Uh, we have a license uh, for uh, to uh, deliver services. The staff person is is uh, an employee of the treasurer's office. Oh. Um, and we partner with other Operation Hope um, insides within the region. Our Regions Bank has the largest, the other largest uh, Operation Hope operation. Uh, so we partner with them uh, to do community outreach and, and also follow clients. Good. Yeah, I mean, because it sounded like you were having some operational constraints, um, clearly. Uh, so, I mean, I just know sometimes those are options and I was curious, so thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Alderman Oldenburg. Uh, Alderman Muhammad just sent me a message. Are you back online now, John? I am, can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Okay, you can uh, continue, pick up from where you were before. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, 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 and thank you, uh, uh, Treasurer uh, Jones. Um, so, I, I, I did not hear uh, your answer to my last question. I know I, I got disconnected uh, from the call, uh, but I was asking about the uh, the parking budget and the shortfall. And I don't know if you continue answering the question after I got off, and if you did, I apologize. Uh, but because why 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 is it that the city of St. Louis always gives you this budget that you cannot work with and you supplement? Uh, and you supplement with parking division funds. Um, is this just the the common practice, or is this? I mean, like, what 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 is it uh, really? Because you have two different accounts. So the the account that the city pays for is is the treasury operations account. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Can you can you just speak a little bit about the treasury operations a little bit more? I know. Uh, the assistant treasurer was just digging into it deeper, uh, but I know you have eight employees. Um, can you just dig into a little bit more exactly uh, what they do for me, if you can, uh, uh, Miss Connie? Okay. Well, um, like I said, we're, we're more than payroll, so we are. Um, we work lock and step with the comptroller. So if you think about it fundamentally, um, the comptroller's office, they make the decisions on what bills have to be paid. And then we carry out those decisions to um, pay uh, the city's obligations. So for example, I, I mentioned the trend, the tax revenue anticipated note. Um, that is, uh, that's due. That's due this week. Um, and so we work uh, closely to make sure um, that when that money is deposited, and so right now, um, earlier today, there was a due diligence call 
the city will again borrow another $45 million um, to carry us through the year. Um, once this bill, once that bill is passed by uh, you all at the Board of Aldermen and that money gets deposited um, in our city clearing account, uh, this office, we work with our investment advisors and we start to develop an investment strategy to ensure that not only will we be able to pay the debt next May 29th of 2021, um, but they were also able to earn interest to help the city pay for the transaction of the TRAN. So that's something that a lot of people don't know. Um, other things that we are responsible for um, are the processing of uh, child support. We have over 600 child support cases um, for, uh, close to 500 garnishment cases, um, that are processed by one accountant. Okay. With this being a payroll week, um, the, the good Reverend Eric, uh, is out there now crunching numbers, uh, trying to make sure, um, that everyone gets paid accordingly. So that's another area that this office is responsible for. Um, in addition to that, I mentioned, um, we've talked about the ERP system. Um, we were at the table um, along with IT, the comptroller and other departments discussing what those requirements would be for an ERP system. And we were actively planning um, for the hopeful implementation um, because the truth of the matter is the city can't, you know, we are part of, a, of, an, of the city's accounting system. The city doesn't have an electronic accounting system, but it has us. So we are part of your accounting. So anything that anything that's money is us. So anything that comes through that window, any adjustments, any RCFs that are um, that are uh, prepared by departments, all of that. And then some, those things are processed by this office. Um, and that's why we were in concert with the comptroller's office to make sure that the books, particularly the city clearing, which is the operating account for the city, um, that we are all on the same page. So that budget and planning will have accurate numbers for its forecasting um, and, and uh, subsequent budget and planning. So that's something that you know, some people may not be on the outside, but we are very busy on the inside doing. Um, and even though we're practicing social distancing, um, there are five of us here today working hard to make sure um, that when you pull up your bank account uh, tomorrow or later today, um, that you see that everything is in order. Um, so those are some of the big things. Um, the uh, RFP process that the treasurer mentioned for payroll, that was huge. The city had the same payroll provider for 35 years. And to our knowledge and records, 35 years ago, there was no RFP for a payroll provider. So we had to uh, prepare an RFP, um, issue it, um, interview people, um, and think about what the city needed now. Okay, the um, previous provider, great institution, but the original scope of services was set 35 years ago. And so, so much had changed. So we had to um, look at what the needs of the employees were today and how the scope of banking services had changed. So that was huge for us. Um, so uh, now we have that. We are currently um, working with the airport um, who's also expressed some interest in developing an RFP um, for some additional, uh, just to scope out and see if they could find some different rates for their banking services. Um, I think the treasurer may have mentioned we have an accountant on staff and 50% of her work is airport. She reconciles all of the airport's accounts, um, which is a huge client of ours. And 
we do, uh, and I have another accountant that does all the investments for the airport. Those two individuals alone, that's a job, not to mention the other 34 accounts. So um, we have a lot of work, um, uh, but not a lot of laborers, but we do the best that we can. And these guys are very dedicated and they work hard. Um, and I think you've been in our office, you've seen our crew, um, we're a tight knit group and we just try to get the job done. So um, that's what treasury operations is. Um, we're kind of the people under the stairs, um, but uh, we are an essential city service and function. And that's probably why we're on the city's budget. Um, but without us, city cannot do some of the essential financial management that they need to do. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Assistant Treasurer. That was very detailed. I appreciate that. Um, as far as the college kids program, is, is this still being uh, paid for uh, with taxpayers dollars? Uh, as uh, it is a transfer from the parking division. Uh, so it's paid for through parking funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. But also and it's it's only also, a portion, yeah, but only a portion of that. We provide the initial seed. I'm sorry, Jared. Uh, we I'm provide a seed account of fifty dollars per kindergartner, and then the incentive portion is the uh, the the money we give for attendance, match savings, and parents' participation in financial education courses is raised privately through foundations, through individuals, through corporations. Thank you, uh, Treasurer. Uh, uh, Mr. Boyd, was you following up or did she say exactly what you said? She's the she boss, right? She's the boss, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Treasurer. I have no further questions. Uh, right. And thank you, uh, Ms. Connie Johnson, for that very detailed answer. I appreciate your expertise. And yes, your office is very tight knit. You run a good ship. You in. Treasurer Jones. So thank you. Uh, no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Alderwoman Boyd, any questions or comments of the uh, Treasurer's office? No questions. I just learned a lot today. Thank you. All right. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No questions. All right. Thank you, Alderwoman. Uh, Treasurer, you, you mentioned before that somebody's breaking up there or something. The the one employee is paid partially by the airport. Will that are there enough airport funds this year to be paying uh, that employee, or would you have to dip into your own office to, to pay her? Uh, that, they, they are yeah. uh, keeping that promise. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Because last time I looked, there's only about one plane every other day out there in the sky. I know. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we do have a few. Nine committee members uh, who are present, uh, I've received a message uh, uh, that would like to have a question or two, if that's fine with you. Uh, we have uh, Alderman Jeffrey Boyd, you want to ask a question of the Treasurer's Office? Are you still online? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I wanted to ask a question about the Office of Financial Empowerment. I'm reading in the budget bill, it looks like the, the college kids coordinator, outreach coordinator wasn't, fund, wasn't funded previously as well as the financial well-being counselor wasn't funded last year. So are there new positions this year? Connie, let me speak on the uh, college kid. Uh, that, was an, uh, that was an error. So let me... Uh, two years ago, you might, well, a year ago, you may recall um, the treasurer's office requested um, an assistant college kids coordinator slash outreach person because the program um, had grown. Um, there are now over 16,000 uh, children enrolled in the program, and we only had one person managing the uh, the 47, we have 47 public schools and 18 charter schools. So we needed someone else to assist the coordinator 
um, with some of the administrative tasks and the overall um, program management. So now we have uh, we have Barbara Davis, who was a former NSO, and we have Martin Mike Long as her uh, the college kids uh, assistant coordinator and uh, outreach person. So that position was approved, but um, that was an error in how that budget was uh, that was originally printed. So. Yeah, always only had one person and then we asked last year for an additional person which was approved. There has always been a financial well-being coach ever since the office of uh, financial empowerment has been in existence. I, yes. So I'll let I'll yield to Jared to go ahead and share additional. Sure. So originally the cost to, to work with Operation Hope and provide the services for $50,000 for the first uh, portion of our relationship. And that amount increased to $100,000. So initially we were able to raise funds to cover the entire, uh, so it's essentially a grant-based position for 100%. Um, so we, uh, that price went up, the value of that service went to $100,000. So we were able to raise grants for the license to use Operation Hope software and their their systems and other in, in their network, but um, the cost uh, exceeded the grants that we had. So um, we made the decision to bring that person on staff, although the person had all had been in the office for several years and built relationships within the community. Um, and we're able also at, as we've brought that person on staff to have a greater hand in shaping their metrics. Um, we now are able to have more control and, and make sure that as they are reporting to us that they, um, they don't simply kind of uh, aren't tasked with not just kind of making the operation hope metrics, which, which we think help the city, but also um, able to help folks, um, like I said, that are more in line with our OFE program. So, so last year, Operation Hope paid for it, and this year they're not, is, is, is that? Not necessarily, we, we were able to raise grants, like I said, from uh, different banks and charities uh, to help pay for Operation, you actually pay Operation Hope for a counselor. So uh, the Operation Hope employees are technically underfunded by banks or other entities um, in a lot of other cases. So originally, like I said, we were able to raise money for 100% of the Operation Hope cost because it was only $50,000. Okay, but it's, so, so just point me in the budget, Jared, where we're paying for the fifty thousand dollars of op, for the software, what is that in the budget? We're not we're not paying that. We raise funds for banks to actually pay Operation Hope. We don't like I said. We have not spent that money. That's not State. government funding. So the the treasurer's office. Do you receive money from the banks that are financing this? No, they make their donations to Operation Hope. Oh, okay. And that's why that's why it never was a pass through grant. The money never came to our office. The banks would write their their charitable contributions directly to Operation Hope. Right. So, so the so I, the position used to be funded through Operation Hope and some grants, right? Basically, yes. Banks banks contributed to Operation Hope in efforts to fund this position. But they're not funding enough anymore. So you have to use parking revenues to fund the position. Is that right? For fifty percent correct of the value of the service. So the forty-two thousand, forty-three thousand four hundred and twenty dollars, those are parking revenues. Correct. Okay. And so let's talk about the financial well-being counselors. Um, is that a new position? 
No, as, as I stated before, they weren't technically on our table of organization because they weren't city employees. We didn't physically pay them originally, but they've been in that office space for about five years. Okay. So we've, we've had an Operation Hope counselor in city government for, like I said, five years. So um, because I, I, I deal with the parking budget, uh, I saw wellness coach in the parking budget. Was that funded through parking last year? I believe it was because of kind of the late changing nature of uh, the value that the, the $50,000 gap. But you just said that that person was not a city employee. I said previously the person was not a city employee. So for I believe the first maybe three years of service, that person was not a city employee, the Operation Hope Counselor. And then the value of the service went from $50,000 to $100,000. And at that time, like I said, we made the decision to uh, make that person a city employee. So, but, but last year, wasn't it in the budget that was approved by the parking commission last year? I believe so. So that means we paid that person out of the parking revenues then all, for a whole year, right? Correct. But that but person- previous, But the previous to that time for clarification- but, but, but they were, talking about, I understand yeah. that, I got you. I'm with you on the previous time, I'm talking about currently. So, yeah. and I remember we kind of had a conversation about this last year. So, so that person should have appeared in the treasurer's budget, like we're seeing it this year, but the person, uh, instead of appearing where the person should have appeared, the person appeared in the parking commission's budget, correct? I believe that person was on, was not in this budget last year, was in the parking budget last year, but yes. So they were kind of hidden over there in the parking because it should, so, so they should have been here since we were paying them to work in the treasurer's office, they should have been here last year, just like they are this year, right? I, I think, yes, this year, okay. this person is in the correct budget. That being said, uh, we provided a full, I don't think we, I would characterize it as hiding the position because we listed the person in our table, in our budget last year with their name, so. So, so, what, so, so, so accountants as well. I'm sorry, say again. We also, there were also accountants as well that were covered by park, the parking division that are working in treasury that we were not able to shift to the treasury operations budget until this year. Okay, so this year there's some accountants being paid for out of parking. Is that what you just said? No, not this, this year, this fiscal year, yes. Next fiscal year, they are in the treasury operations budget. Okay, so you funded through general revenue this year? Yes. No, okay. next year, next fiscal year. I mean, yeah, this coming up, this budget we're working on, they're funded in this budget under yes. general revenue. Yes. Okay, got you. Um, so, cause we got to bounce, I have to bounce between the parking budget. So in the parking budget line item where it says debt service major projects, is that the transfer money? I believe so. Um, Michelle is not on the call. And and what it shows, uh, budgeted for 21, it shows something's not right. It shows $528,861. Does that sound right? No, I don't know which. I'll have to look at uh, the parking. Okay. Is, it, 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 is it one line item that transfers over in, within the parking budget or is it a bunch of stuff grouped in major projects? I'm just trying to add the numbers up. Sorry, we don't have that budget in front of us. We didn't know okay. we had questions okay. today. So the 200, 
question let me on my answer own. it should be a 383,000 non operating Mr. Chairman. Oh. Um, yeah, I thought they were trying to uh, find an answer. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, in, yes, in, order for, in order for us to keep our uh, ability to have uh, everyone who's interested in having questions, the parking mm -hmm. division is uh, can be talked about offline. So we please okay. move forward. We're not, we're not talking about the parking division. I'm just trying to match the money up coming from the park because I'm trying to... Jared, you don't. You can stop looking, Jared. Um, I was saying, I think it's three hundred eighty-three thousand dollars is the transfer for OFE. Okay, so wh where where's the money that is do just donated to the children? What line item is that in? The fifty dollars. I'll have to ask Michelle, but I think that's approximately a hundred and eighty or a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, somewhere in that vicinity. <laughs> Where is it in the budget? It's in the, um, so on the, in the treasury operations budget, which goes through ways and means, it's uh, the comptroller access to put it as pass through and it's listed um, as $180,000. Pass through college savings program line 5662016. What page is that? 170 of the budget book, I think. Gotcha. Okay. I got it. Thank you. No further questions. All right. Thank you, Alderman. All right. Uh, if there's any other further comments or questions of the uh, Treasurer's Office, I don't see any hands raised. Uh, we will excuse you. Uh, thank you, Treasurer Jones, uh, your staff, Ms. Johnson, Mr. Boyd. Thank you very much for your presence here. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Members of the All right. Everyone stay safe and healthy. You too. All right. You're excused. Thank you. All right, members of the committee. And do we have Mr. Payne uh, online? I see Gerard's there. Paul's not at his desk. If you guys uh, maybe see STL will take a, uh, all right, Paul. Does anybody need to take a break? Connie, you're excused here. You can go, sorry. All right. I think we need a break. <laughs> okay, Paul, you're, sorry, I know you showed up and we've been just take a five, Jeremy, if we could. Yeah, we need to just, I think everybody needs to uh, return their coffee to where it came. So uh, <laughs> give us about, uh, it's 1120, we'll be back at 1130 if that's okay with everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, all right. Call order. Uh, Mr. Payne's here, I see him. Okay, so. Paul, we've gone through all our departments. Uh, and if I remember correctly, the three layering things we have are the uh, Ward Capital, uh, the fire department request for breathing apparatus and uh, radios, and then uh, various, a few other things, totaling up to a little under 600,000 from the circuit attorney's office, around 585,000. Uh, the Ward Capital, I believe it's five million, and 
I think the fire department total is right around 10 million or a little over 10 million for everything that they're requesting. Uh, those are the, if anyone corrects me, my advice or anyone else. Parks? Is there anything from parks, Mr. Chairman? Uh, oh, parks, we forgot. That was uh, my notes. That's been so long ago, I forgot about it. Thank you, Alderman Oldenburg. Uh, that was around 700,000, wasn't that? Correct, correct. Okay. okay. So all together, what's that? Uh, 13,000, 10, 15 million? <laughs> I'm sure we have the money just laying right around, don't we, Paul? Um, and what we're going to be doing here today is just merely discussing. Uh, we'll probably a lot about, you know, 45 minutes unless there's more time for discussion. Uh, we are being having a public hearing on Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. through webinar for public input. And then Tuesday we'll reconvene at 10 a.m. to uh, hopefully finalize our increases reductions. Uh, with that, I'll go around the board, uh, starting with you, uh, Madam Vice. Uh, any discussion with uh, Paul Payne about uh, what you would like or what you'd like to see occur here? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, uh, Mr. Payne, two of the things that I have interest in for additional information would be uh, what funds are left in the half cent sales tax for the recreation division and parks. I do know that they were getting uh, some funding as well, and I'd like to see where they are and their expenditures for this current year. I do know that you've already provided us with uh, those expenditures for uh, the circuit attorney's office. And I also wanted to have uh, a little bit more conversation from you about our reserve fund because we may uh, need to go back to that. I do know you have a certain percentage, but based on the crisis that we are in, we may, may not be able to maintain that, but maintain something that is respectable and we may need to use some of those funds. So uh, uh, my last uh, thing is, I'm putting in, in my priority for this moment until I hear from the public, uh, my priority at this moment is the fire department. Uh, secondly, if we don't have appropriate funding already in place for the circuit attorney's office, third would be recreation if there's not already additional funding still maintained there. And as he ended his presentation to us, he believed that he could do with the budget that's presented to him. Those were just some desires. And right now we cannot fulfill desires. We can only deal with those things that are uh, absolute need and or emergency. Uh, and I think that's it for me. So uh, I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paul, would you like to weigh in on any of uh, Marlene's uh, comments? You need to unmute yourself, Paul. Paul, you're, you're still muted. There we go. All right. There All right. If I understand correctly, you'd like an update on the recreation capital accounts and what's uh, what's there currently. So yeah, I can I can bring that. As a matter of fact, with the end of the month, I could uh, we could we could get uh, the latest and greatest from that fund. Um, in terms of our fund balance, um, if you recall, we had a discussion about that when I did the budget presentation, and I, I can't overemphasize the need to be prudent with what our unreserved general fund balance is because. That's the kind of thing that saves us when revenues uh, fall short. And I, I can tell you going back to uh, the last recession in nine and 10, um, we, had, we had always established a minimum reserve of 5% of the general fund budget, but that's recognized as a minimum and it's not really recognized as adequate, but that's where we were at the time. And we were a little bit over that. Uh, and in the subsequent 
two fiscal years, I think it was nine and 10, we drew down over $18 million from what was a 24 million at the time. And so we had like $6 million left on a cash basis in our general fund reserve. That, so that was just, that, 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 that's not sustainable. We cannot let ourselves get into that situation again. And uh, so in recent years um, with concerted efforts, we both got contributions from the, the, uh, the parking meter fund of 10 million in FY19. We also started budgeting uh, an amount to, to our reserves of one and a half percent of salary, about $3.4 million. And then we had a surplus last year. We were able to get uh, up about 8% or so. I mean, so our, 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 revised, our target was around 10. We were on our way to get there. Uh, and then this happened. So, um, and, and I can tell you that in, in terms of, I mean, it seems like this will be my fourth recession, I believe. And I, I remember eight and nine and 10 thinking this is the worst it's ever going to be. I mean, this is, this was pretty bad. I would have to tell you that the, 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 what strikes me about this one is the, the level of an uncertainty regarding both duration and severity of the drop that we're looking at uh, it, uh, is unprecedented. And I think, um, so when you're considering fund balance, that is your ability to sustain uh, just basic operations in uh, uh, an environment where you've got a high degree of uncertainty. And, and so, uh, unfortunately, we're in a position where we have to look at the budget, look at your what are your core functions, what are your highest priorities, and try to maintain those. But everything else, as Alderman Davis suggested, was it's sort of a, a like to have and a need to have. We can only do the need to haves these days. I mean, we, we everything else, we it just has to take a back burner. And unfortunately, that's, like I've said, I, I think there's no, uh, there's a great need for capital. But uh, unfortunately, capital gets deferred when we have to make sure we've got sufficient funds to uh, pick up the trash and mow the parks and uh, provide police protection and all and what have you. So um, I think if, as you look forward and say, OK, these are the things that we need. And if these are actually higher priorities than something else, then we need to be realistic and propose cuts uh, to offset them. And I. I and I would discourage cuts from general fund reserve. That's, that sounds like, because that sounds like an easy cut, but it's, it, there's no constituency for it. it. There's no one is going to be calling it. Oh, I, I, I don't think you should be cutting reserves, but that is what keeps our, our uh, ability to maintain services in uh, a period where you've got revenues to revenue declines and, and no way of, uh, of, of making it without it. And it, it sort of saved us in the past. And I think that uh, it underscores the, uh, the, the need for maintaining them. But, um, but I, yeah, I can get that information on the recreation uh, accounts. Um, I, I, I believe we had uh, the fund balance information in the budget presentation, but if you need some more information on that, I can also provide that. Okay, I'll double check. I probably just looked over that uh, right. because I'm actually, I'm interested in all of those accounts because right. Uh, if they were not prudent enough to expend the money uh, during the calendar year, then they didn't need it. Uh, and we do for other things. So uh, I'm willing to look at all those funds to see what's available there. Sure. Uh, and um, it's, I, I think we should share with the rest of the committee the balance that is currently in the circuit attorney's office. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Other than I, that, I was going to suggest, yeah, with the circuit attorney's office, um, they've been, they are awarded a, a certain amount, uh, I think it's at least a million and a half or so uh, in the Prop P funds, both in the sales tax side and the use tax side. Uh, in FY19, uh, I think it was almost, almost 1.6 million. They spent about half of that. So they began the year with about $800,000 balance. They were on track to, uh, now revenues are down a little bit. It might drop below a million five, depending on what the sales tax final number is. But they were tracking on the same level of expenditure. So while that money is being appropriated, it's, it's only about a half of it that's been spent. So that's why uh, there was a uh, uh, in part of the balance budget balancing measure. We we allocated a salary savings on the general fund to, to utilize some of those uh, fund, special funds. But I can also provide that as well. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I had not paid attention earlier. And then when I looked at that, I knew I needed to know 
where we were and where they're on track for. So the ask uh, is a lot less than what they currently have available to them. And that's not counting uh, where they may be by the end of this fiscal year. So they can be okay. Yes. All, All right. right, thank you. That's it for me, sir. All right, thank you, Madam Vice. All right, Member Carl, any questions, comments? Uh, Joe, please unmute yourself. I don't think I ever, ever believe I would say that to you, but Joe, please unmute yourself. So, Paul, <laughs> in the ballot initiative that was passed on the half cent sales tax, which I have up in front of me, there is no part of this that says, gee, you know what, in a bad year, you can just take large capital away. It's very specific as to where that money goes. It's also very specific that each ward by the 28 wards, if you read in section nine, that that money has to be given to the wards. Now, in my neighborhood, where taxes have jumped up to over $3,000 for property tax, telling the people that, gee, you know, uh, you're not paying enough taxes or whatever you want to, however you want to explain it, they want, to, they want city services. They're not happy about no police. They're not happy that we're dragging two years behind on sidewalks. They're not, you know, the ward capital. Mason. I'm, I'm sorry, somebody, somebody keeps talking. Um, so my problem is whether you believe it or not, and I'm not saying, because even the 8 million that they've done in the past isn't really the proper amount. It should be based off the amount of sales tax collected and divided in the way that the taxpayers said. I'm fine if we take 5 million, whether we get it or not from the treasurer, I don't think it's gonna break the city so that at least we can get some work done, some roads done in the wards. It's, it's important. How do we go to the voters on the next budget uh, tax increase and, and say, gee, you know, we're only going to use this money this way, and then we don't, you know. And, and, and I also am curious about how much we have in the capital fund. I went over this with Gerard, and I, Gerard, at any point, please jump in. But um, the, the uh, breathing apparatus for the fire department is important. But we were talking, Gerard was talking to me about that should be a capital expense and not out of general revenue. And since you, you and, and Tom Oldenburg sits on that, the, the curious question, is there money in the capital, you know, from the bond issue left that we can get the fire department, their breathing apparatus and the capital fund? And uh, again, I'm not asking for the full amount, but I'm telling you that we need to have large capital. So I'm proposing, and it, I got it in writing that we, take 5 million out of the reserves, the general fund reserves, and put it into ward capital. Unless you can come up with a better way. But, uh, you know, my other alternative is when people ask me, why aren't we getting done? I'm gonna say, well, what you voted on, the city chose not to do. And I would assume that uh, Sharon Tyus is all over this. It'll end up in court because She's not going to let it go. I'm fine if we transfer the five million, so at least we can do some work in our wards. Well, let, let me address a, a couple of those issues, and this comes up a lot when we talk about special funds. I'll talk about the, the sales tax in, in general. The sale, the the ballot for the sales tax was basically an authorization for the half cent sales tax. That was the ballot. The I have ordinance, language. When the, but the, the 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 allocation language is in the ordinance, not the ballot language. OK, so basically what you're what you're doing is saying, notwithstanding that ordinance, this is how you're proposing the all allocated. And then, so that and, and that's basically the, the, the premise in, in what that proposal is. And that's been done in prior, prior years. And that's with it. It was not part of the ballot. It, the ballot basically authorized the half cent sales tax for capital. But it says in the ballot language, which I have, this is where the money's going. So for half cent capital we, fund we, so for half cent so capital we, fund. So it, for the half cent the capital fund, okay. but not 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 fifty percent. The, the the language in the ballot itself did not alloc do the allocations. The ballot language itself was authorizing the half cent sales tax. The ordinance, but, 
the ordinance which authorized the, the ordinance which authorized the ballot is what uh, provided the allocation. And so that's the, pe the people were told in the ballot language yes or no, and it's one half cent sales tax for the purpose of and and so what that's right that's right it's so, in it's so, in the, and so. so so it, when it, we it, go to the people and we tell them this, and when we do the ordinance, we change it around. That is not, that's deceitful. Paul. Which it, no, well, deceitful. no, no. Here, here's here's my here's my argument, and 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 and, it, and it applies to practically every special fund we do, and we do a uh, an extraordinary amount of special funds, which is another issue. But basically, what you what you say is okay. We're we're approving this special source of funds for this purpose, and let's say it's more. Uh, more uh, park maintenance, all right? So we said, okay, we're gonna get additional park maintenance with this additional source of revenue. I said, well, that's fine and good, but the general fund revenue, nothing's propping that up. So how do, how do you provide something in addition when the base declines? So if we have a budget where revenues drop 10%, serious, a serious drop, how are you going to, and then you say, oh, no, but you still need to provide this extra. Well, the very definition of extra, but I understand that, but the very definition of extra is null, is almost nullified by the fact that your general fund has dropped. So the question is for you as older, older people who want to make decisions is now knowing what we now know, is this still the highest priority? Now, if it is, that's fine. And, that, and, that's, and you say, okay, we believe ward cap is still a higher priority. Then what are we going to cut to ensure that we can maintain all of that? Or, or, and so uh, that's the decision. And I would argue that, that that's fine, but a cut on fund balance, that's, that's not a cut. I mean, that's basically you're, you're spending money that's uh, uh, supposed to be protecting us for the deficit. So uh, it, it's one thing to say, okay, we're going to, have, we have this priority, but then if you make a, a cut that's, you know, not really a cut, then that's the question. It, 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 any given year, you're going to have a budget where you, you've got priorities and you have to weigh what those are, regardless of funds, regardless of, uh, of, of the amounts. And if you still believe that those are the highest priorities, then you, that's fine. And, and you make that decision, but then something else has to be cut. And that's, and well, that's very well, our, 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 our uh, reserves are up over 40 million. Five million isn't going to break the city. It isn't going to put us in jeopardy. But the taxpayers need services. We already tell them, gee, you know, we're not doing this. We're not doing that. I'm telling you, try to get another bond issue or anything passed. If we don't provide them with some services, and we say, well, yeah, but what you voted on and what we put in the ordinance doesn't count. So we're going to put what we say on the ballot language and then we're going to change it around. And so what you vote on, we lied. It's, it's, it, well, it's deception. It's not, okay, well, I'll say it's deception. I, well, if I, I read I, the ballot language, it looks to me like this is where the money goes. Now the ballot language, the ballot language is separate from the ordinance, but I, I, I know what you're saying, but the ballot language is separate from the ordinance. When I have both up there, and if Gerard somewhere on here, he also went to me, I didn't come here I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Gerard and or Lou. Lou is who I'm thinking of. Because I asked Lou as a legal question, can this money be used to balance the budget? And he said, absolutely not. That's our attorney. That's who I'm going off of. He and, is and, the and one who represents that. And, and that's fine. And, and, I understand, and I appreciate that. But when you, the allocation of the funds is by ordinance. And when you pass another ordinance that says, notwithstanding this ordinance, this is this is how we're allocating, then that's one ordinance amending another ordinance. And, and I'm like, I don't want to get in. I'm not an attorney. I'm not going to get into the legal argument. But I'm just telling you the basic premise when you get to budgeting is what's your priority? And if this is a higher priority, then you cut something else that's a lesser priority. So there is, there is no magic to that. It, it's it's every everyone who has a household has to do the same thing and say this is more important than this. And if that's the case, then you act accordingly, and and, and that's and that's how you go, and that's how it goes. But we we also and I hope lose somewhere on here, because that's who I talk to as our attorney to get his opinion, his legal opinion, of this, and his legal opinion was it cannot be used the way we're using it. Now, 
I get that you're doing it from a budget standpoint. And I would say, yes, I, I, I don't disagree, but I'm telling you from whatever, good luck passing any more bond issues or anything when we say one thing and do another. And that's what we're doing. And uh, if Lou's on here, I, 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 I think he could better explain it. But I do believe that street lights, paving, tripping hazards are an emergency uh, use. And I do believe the argument to take 5 million of the reserves, which isn't going to bankrupt the city, um, you know, that, that doesn't, uh, I'm getting text, I'm sorry, that it doesn't bankrupt the city, that taking that out of there is very appropriate considering street lights because of crime, speed bumps because or humps or whatever because of speeding, paved streets, all these things are definitely an emergency. And, and I agree with what you're saying. I would hope, and I'll end it at this, I would hope that all the aldermen on this committee understand the importance of this and support my uh, moving the money from the reserves uh, into ward capital so that we can provide for our neighbors. And, and you're right, Paul, it's gonna be up to the aldermen to make that decision. Uh, so I'll, I'll, Joe, I'll mute myself and- Thank you, uh, sir. All right, Alderwoman Howard. Um, I just have a question for Paul. Um, are Prop P funds uh, restricted in any way as far as where they can be allocated? Uh, yeah, the ordinance which authorized uh, the Prop P um, did state that it would be for uh, on, on a, a percentage percentage allocation. So I believe the sales tax piece was allocated 66% to the police department, uh, 20 something percent to the fire, and then another percentage to uh, um, uh, circuit attorney. And then the, there was a use tax piece as well, and that also had percentages again allocated by right. ordinance. Now that use tax money is still sitting. That was for transportation, is that correct? Um, okay, now oh, you're thinking, you're not, that's not Prop P. That would be that's, the economic, okay. that, that's, a, that's a different, uh, that's a different, a different fund. One. Economic development sales tax, which does have uh, a somewhat restriction that it is economic development related. And 60% of that does need to go to transit purposes, uh, which may include a Metrolink, but, uh, but the rest was allocated uh, by the ordinance of 10% each for each of those categories. Okay, so if there would be money of the Prop P in say the circuit attorney's budget, can that be moved to someone else's budget or it has to remain that percentage? Well, it, it has to remain, well, I mean, as I mentioned, you can, order, you can always amend an ordinance with an ordinance, but the way this budget was uh, presented was that the um, circuit attorney's amount is remaining in that account, but since she had unspent monies, we basically okay. use that to offset some of her general fund salary costs. You'll see the salary savings in her general funds is, is up uh, to, uh, and then which reduced the burden on the general fund. It's still being used for, so Prop P money is still going to the circuit attorney, but it offsets some of our general fund costs for the circuit attorney. It's the same. So basically, you've already made the adjustment for her unspent fund, unspent funds. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. To the to the most okay. part, yes. So if we leave it the way it is, that she'll she'll have the same amount basically as she had last year. Um, Give or take, you cut a yeah, position. That's correct. You cut a position or two. Okay. All right. All right. That answers my question. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, all the one, all the woman Hubbard. Roman Hubbard, are we with us still? All right, we can come back to her. Alderman Murphy. Hi, hi, Paul. Um, I guess maybe to just clarification, um, it, it sounded like we said that the circuit attorney's office had unspent uh, Prop P money. Um, and can she use that for her computers, I guess, is my question. Or for what you just told Alderman Howard, it sounds like it's already, there is no unspent money there. It's already been allocated somewhere else. Okay. 
Well, the, the, the large amount that was unspent that is projected to be unspent both this year and last year had been reappropriated for FY21 to offset her general fund costs. Now, if, but she, uh, that office seems to be underspending their appropriation in total uh, such that, um, for instance, on salaries and such that mm -hmm. if, if, if they continue at that in FY21, they would, they, they would still seem to be some flexibility in their budget there. For, for the computer, she's asking for like- Yeah, I, 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 I forget, I had that discussion on computers. I didn't see that original request in their budget um, uh, sure. amount, but I, I would suppose that if, if the trend for this year continues in the next year, assuming, and we did take a little bit more salary savings, but, uh, there, you would think there'd be still some some leeway there. I don't know about the two hundred thousand or not, but uh, there would still be some. Uh, <laughs> and how how quickly she fills positions or fills the, those right. positions that are vacant. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She she had she had a couple of asks, but her her most important ask was to a minimum of two hundred twenty thousand for computers. And I was just wondering if there isn't something in there that she could use for that, and then you know, do the rest later or whatever, because we're all, you know, tightening our belts, as they say. Okay, that's, uh, that was that question. And then I said, just getting back to the, uh, the war capital funds, um, I do have some in reserve. I think, you know, maybe I kind of did that just because that's the way I, I operate in, in real life. I want to have something in reserve in case an emergency comes up right. like that. Mm -hmm. right. So, I, you know, uh, uh, take care of uh, things in my ward, I believe. But I do have some. Now, in my understanding is that we were still going to get $100,000 in City Works, right? Yeah, St. Louis Works, yes. I'm sorry, St. Louis Works. That's correct. Um, so it's not like we're not getting anything. We, ward, each ward would be getting hundred grand. That's correct. And so now maybe clarify this for us. Of that uh, St. Louis Works money, um, can, what can we use? What can and can we use that for? Maybe can you? I, I believe it's that? yeah. I believe it's street and public right of way. Okay. So it's mostly paving, you know, curb cuts. I think I think that because it's public right of way, I thought some trees were involved in that. I, I again, I'd have to defer, but it, uh, involving public right of way, I, I believe okay, was. So lighting might even be included in there, perhaps. What's that? Uh, lighting. You know, it, uh, yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah, I, I don't want to get. Uh, I'd have to look and see historically whether there's been charges like that before. But it's I was possible. Just, I was just uh, like um, saying, is that it's not like we don't have anything, you know. Um, and I wanted to make sure that Hunter, you know, uh, was in there. And then I guess like I, I didn't write any of this up yet either because we didn't have uh, our meetings. Um, I think one of my biggest concerns, of course, would be the breathing apparatus for the police for the fire department. You know, um, they seem to be very concerned about that. So therefore, I am very concerned about that. Um, and then maybe if, if um, I don't know if it's a wants to question or not, but million, how does he feel about moving that $5 million from reserves as far as the city's um, health needs? I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't hear the last part of that question. I, I said maybe this was, I didn't know if Gerard wanted to answer this or not. How does he feel about if he did transfer the $5 million from you know, the reserve, as Alderman Vaccaro said, it won't break the city or whatever. How could we hear his opinion on that is, I guess, what I would like to know. <laughs> so, Gerard, you... Uh... Oh, when we're always asking your opinion about the reserves. Um, I'll just, just say in general, um, yeah. I'm very concerned about the general fund reserve and, 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 and the protection of the general fund reserve. You know, it, if you look at five million as a standalone, it won't hurt us, but but you have to think about the long term. You know, something that something that Paul and I talked about is that you know, you rarely know when you're about to go into a recession. We know we're in a recession and we know it's a bad recession. We just don't know how long. Um, I'm, as a lot of you know and have talked to me, I'm much more pessimistic than, than probably most. And so I think 
we're looking at a solid, you know, one to two year recession. And when I mean recession, meaning we won't re we won't return to 2000 fiscal 19 revenue numbers for two years, which means if that's the case, we'll be right back here this time next year, basically looking for money, making cuts again. And, that, you know, and I'll turn all to this, you know, if numbers, continue, you know, if we see the deterioration, even as we get reports in June, we may even have to cut this budget again. Um, and, you know, that reserve, I have concerns that, you know, if, if revenues don't recover, like we think they're going to recover throughout the year, we may have to pull for the reserve in the middle of the year. Um, I mean, it's like every day there's some announcement that, you know, that hits us, that ties us directly to revenue. I know there was an announcement, I, I believe it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, that um, St. Louis Blues did not make the final, the, uh, the was the St. Louis wasn't selected as the 10 cities that if we have a hockey season, that, um, that you know, that, that, the, the facility, that they would play there. So that means our hockey season is done. There will be no more hockey games in um, Enterprise Center for the rest of this year. So any revenue that we were thinking about that, it's, that's off the table. That's not going to happen if there is a hockey season. Um, what if there, I mean, we know that if, ba if baseball starts, it's going to be half the season and they're going to start without fans. Well, no fans, no sell sites revenue, right? And, you know, what's the likelihood that if they do have a season, there will be any fans for the whole season, right? Um, I'm, I'm very concerned that, you know, that in the middle of the year, you know, the fiscal year, which will be around Christmas, we'll look at our, our numbers and say, we're, it, we are lagging and we need to pull the reserves to make it through next year's fiscal year as, you know, as we had to pull in excess funds this year to make it through the end of the year. And so when you think about the reserve, you got to think about, I mean, I, I kind of think about it as a two-year cycle, right? That 46 or 48, whatever, has got to make the next two to three years, right, of the of potentially declining revenue. And that's, you know, and, and, and that's kind of how I have to think about it. Now, I I don't envy your situation as older people, and I don't envy the decision. You have to balance city services with protecting the reserve, and it's a balance, Right. And in theory, you could not pay for anything, put all the money in the reserve, right? But the city wouldn't have, the city couldn't function. And so I, I totally understand, and Alderman Bacaro and I have talked about this at LIMP, I totally get that, I understand that. And so I'm not a quote unquote against necessarily spending money out of the reserve because you have to maintain certain level of city services. And as revenues fall, you have to pull from that reserve. My concern um, is that we have to balance that over not just this fiscal year, over multiple fiscal years. I mean, I would like to see funds pulled in, any excess funds that are not in the general fund, I'd like to see pulled into the general fund just to get us through um, this, this recession, this fiscal year. Um, as you think about it, um, you know, and, and Alderman Vaccaro mentioned me in his comments, and I'm, I'm not going to comment, Alderman Vaccaro, on, on legal matters. You know, I will. I'm not a lawyer, and will not pretend to be a lawyer. I'll, I'll leave that to our esteemed um, attorney Lou to handle those questions. But um, Alderman Vaccaro can attest to. He and I have talked for years about the city's procedure of creating special accounts. A lot of special accounts. We have a disproportionate number of special accounts, right? And yeah, right, and some some of those accounts are necessary. Necess they're 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 required by state law because the state has basically through state statute carves that money up. But a lot of them are our own choices, and that's the board's decision. But when you get in financial trouble, or when there is financial trouble, trying to like find that money and what can you pull and what you not can pull, it's like spaghetti, right? It is hard to figure it out. And so some, there are always going to be some special accounts you have to have by law, right? You know, we call, like the enterprise funds, we call them enterprise funds, but they're really special accounts, right? They're accounts that we can't touch. There, there are certain accounts, like I would argue, I think Prop P was 
a state statute, which probably necessitate, necessitates a special account because it was a state that told us how that money had to be divided up. Uh, we decide to divide up money into special accounts. It makes it very complicated to figure out, you know, what money can be pulled and what can't. And then when you create a special account, you create a sacred cow. And in recessions, it's hard to cut from sacred cows. And so, again, I am extremely concerned about the city's reserve, about it may be maintained over multiple years. You know, there's a saying, um, an economist, my, a friend of mine tells me about St. Louis. He says, when, when, this, when the country catches a cold, St. Louis catches pneumonia, as far as our economy. And there are things that are occurring in this recession we've never seen before, the level of unemployment. I mean, we, I think the record, Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, for unemployment in the United States is 24.9, which happened during the Great Depression. Sure, yeah. you, might, you might break that record. Um, in general, and this is from conversations I've had with the regional economists from the Federal Reserve, in general, you don't see, during most recessions, you don't see downturns in healthcare. Healthcare is pretty steady, Eddie. You know, through through a downturn or upturn, that is pretty. It's pretty solid, Got and this. It's good for us because we are Ed's a med city. How many? I mean, think about the number of furloughs and layoffs that um, have occurred in the healthcare industry, which right is now, a yeah. part, big part of our economy. That concerns me. That didn't happen in the last recession. Um, There's an announcement yesterday that. Um, that uh, Ameristar is going to not, is potentially not going to hire back 60% of their employees. That's probably one of the better performing casinos in the region. What, what does that mean for our casinos and our casino revenue? If one of the better performing casinos is publicly stated, they believe they might not hire back 60% of their employees. Mm -hmm. That's frightening, right? That's really frightening. And that, and, and that then goes back to the reserve. The only thing we got is the reserve. And during the, during the last recession, we got down to, as Paul stated, $6, $6 million. And we're all saying that this, this recession is probably going to be worse. You know, Paul and I were kidding one of our, one of our conversations recently that um, we thought we had made it through our last recession in our career. We thought 2009, 10, check the box, we're good. Right. I'm a little bit younger than Paul, so I probably had another one in my career coming. <laughs> Paul thought he was going to retire and not have to deal with this again. He, Ten years later, here we are. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you just have to think about the reserve over the long term. You know, I, I think about the reserve over two, two years of declining revenues. Okay. And having to, you're going to have to pull, probably pull from the reserve. You're going to, I mean, you have to balance as, and I get that city services, delivering city services versus the reserve, but it's got to last over that period. So that was kind of a long winded answer. So no, I, no, I, no, I appreciate, uh, that's why I wanted you to answer it. I, you always make so much sense. Uh, and I appreciate you and Paul. And, uh, I, I, I wanted that. I wanted to hear it and I wanted everyone to hear that. So anyway, thank you. That, sure. That's all I, that's all I have. Right. All right, thank you, Alderman. Okay, Alderman Spencer, are you still with us? I am, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for some reason, my the video has been disabled on my on the uh, STL TV end. Uh, I can't start it, but I am certainly still here. Well, we hear you loud and clear. If you have any questions of Gerard or Paul Payne, I do. Suggestions, please proceed. Director Payne, uh, in our last exchange here at Ways and Means, I had. Uh, my concern about the overall budget as a number that we are uh, looking at. Um, and I had requested the assumptions from the budget division on a month to month basis as far as getting back to normal. Uh, I don't know that I may have overlooked any correspondence from your office on, on those issues or on those questions if you sent them. Actually, on the on the month the months the big ones are actually in the the, the presentation itself. What well, the broad I, strokes are. We talked about that. Um, okay. You but know, here, no, go ahead. You know what I was looking for was you know as far as I understand the assumptions driving the overall uh, budget numbers have us getting back to normal operating. <laughs> 
in revenue streams by the end of the year? In the in the base scenario, yes. Uh, the worst scenario would be uh, it would be extended further. That's correct. But the base scenario is a scenario uh, with which we are allocating monies to the departments. Am I That's correct? right. That's okay. right. And, and the way this was presented was that you got two scenarios: one's the base, and one's the worst. Uh, not worst, but worse. And then at the last page, I, I identified about forty million dollars worth of initiatives that would. Uh, could be employed in, in, in some extent should it, it, we continue to see a decline. But those scenarios are projections on a broad sense and we are in fact allocating monies to departments based on the base case. So we have an overall a pot of money that we're divvying up, so to speak, to the departments based on the base case, which has us getting back to regular uh, or previous at levels of revenue by the end of the year. Correct. So my concern is, you know, some you know, related to what Gerard was just describing. Um, you know, if our casinos are only anticipating, you know, getting, you know, less than 50, 60 percent of their employees back, um, we may not ever get back. We may not get back to to our uh, previous revenues by the end of the year. Uh, you know, as I mentioned previously, the state of Missouri Department of um, Economic Development has indicated that they're anticipating a five-year recovery period. So my main concern is that uh, we are being overly optimistic in a general sense with regards to this budget. And even though we are tightening our belts, that we <laughs> may find ourselves just a couple months from now having to further tighten tighten further um, and have unexpected shortfalls as we move through this year. Well, actually, I, you, you may have to tighten some more before this budget's done. Uh, um, one of the, the things I, I uh, just at the end of this month, I'll get my last complete monthly report basically for the month of May uh, uh, in the beginning the first, uh, first of June, okay? So I'll be getting uh, reports on earnings taxes, it's, our final sales tax numbers for the fiscal year and such. Looking at those should be in, should inform us a little bit more than where we were about where we are or, or where we're going. Um, and now looking at the previous month's reports, I was looking at, at that and, and sales tax wasn't quite as down as I had it in, in mind, but that, that I don't think necessarily it was, it was a good sign. What I, what I think I'm seeing here is that it's, it's gonna be more delayed and where the shift is gonna be leading into July and, and further. And so if that's the case and you, and you take that through the models, we may actually have to reduce further and pull from the contingency list just to get this base. Uh, it's sort of a, a hybrid between the base and the, uh, uh, the worst before we're even done uh, uh, by the end of June. So that's, that's definitely a possibility. And, and, and I've, I've sort of, I express this often in, in, in terms of discussing the revenue scenario because of with all the level of uncertainty, is that I, I, there is no, I, I've got no shortage of, of uh, opinions that it, it could be worse. And, and, that, and that's absolutely true. Um, but the idea is that when you, you think that's a possibility in discussing the solutions for that, uh, that's when you can start hearing crickets chirp uh, because these are the hard decisions that we have to make. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, the, the, the willingness or, uh, to make those decisions is, sometimes elusive. And uh, um, uh, so I, I think in, in presenting this to anyone, and I, I, as we talk about rating agencies and, and the like, it has been, hey, look, we need to make a, a, a point where we've got some base level of assumptions. Uh, hopefully they're reasonable. Um, and then again, they could be worse. And, and, and I, I, they will be informed to the point of wherever the latest numbers we've got. But we need to be prepared, should it be worse than what We've got, and then that was the intent with the contingencies that we've identified. Said, look, um, if this happens, what steps are we going to take to make it worse? And I'm going to add on to the the, the uh, to 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 address any additional shortfall. And I'll add on to that fund balance discussion. I've always looked at the fund balance discussion not as a prep, uh, not as pr uh, something that protects us from that which we know is coming. It's that which we don't know is coming. So. For instance, in the last recession, we would take our, our efforts to reduce budget, but if it's 
if, it, if you get, and that's something you see ahead of you, but if you get hit in the back of the head, you've got that as your backup. Um, so it, it's not something that you want to plan on spending. It, it's something that you have when something uh, unexpected comes about. And I think if we can identify a reasonable estimate uh, with the base, latest, latest base numbers and identify a plan uh, for implementing, should it be in a, a worst case scenario, that's how you address it. And, and I'm also looking forward and, and trying to look ahead five years, because we usually do a five-year projection. Um, and um, of course, that's going to be that's going to be informed by that base year, obviously, because that that that's your um, you base it on there. And and I agree. I, in, in a typical five-year projection, and you can look at it. It was in last year's budget. And we're still working on that. Um, you always have a we always have an underlying gap. And single in recent years, it hasn't been that bad. Single digits and millions, but absolutely. Next year, you're going to be looking probably in, in 20 plus uh, just to start with. And so those are the kind of things we have to keep in mind. And depending on how long this recession uh, is going to go, that we're going to have to be prepared for. Yeah. So our so again, our budget here is based on projections that we're getting back to normal revenues by the end of the year. You mentioned that we may have to tighten our belts before the end, before we even come to the finalization of the budget. Um, will, when will new projections from your office be uh, prepared? Will they be before the final passage of this budget, uh, which has to happen before July 1st? Yeah, that's, that's what I anticipate because uh, the end of the month is coming. And so right after the first, we start getting all our results uh, for the month. And so I would expect it's going to, it takes a number of days. We get certain reports from the state, certain, and then, then we got certain reports here, but I would expect that would take within a, within a week or so, we'd have the, the latest and greatest from the month of May. So then do you anticipate um, maybe 10 days into June, us having new revenue estimations? Estimate I think we're going to be having to rejuggle uh, and rejigger some of these yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a very good possibility. Yeah. So we should look for, or we should set aside some serious amount of time to talk about what I would presume is additional cuts, because my my guess would be that revenues will be down further than we anticipated. Is that your is that your uh, initial read on the situation, Paul? Yeah, that would be my read, and I I, I was I'm looking. Of course, you don't know what to what degree, but sure. I would. I would take a look at uh, some of the contingencies that we've already identified and see how, uh, where we are in some of those. And then anything else that anyone else uh, has an idea of uh, to consider. Um, but like I, like I said, when I presented the budget, this is an extraordinarily, extraordinarily unusual budget in that unlike previous years where you might just have a little adjustments here and there before it gets finalized, I would expect every step of this process to be some more significant adjustments. And would those recommendations come from your office and go through the board of VNA before they come to the board of aldermen? I would think that, and, and in this, just um, and, and looking at the process where it is now. So you are at the process of making some recommendations regarding uh, what you would like to see restored. In the meantime, I'm going to be updating some revenue estimates based on the, of the final month. So I would expect that. I and mean, those will be shared. And I expect that both ENA and Ways and Means would have to weigh in on, on all of that before you get a final budget. Okay. I don't envy your position, right, uh, in the next coming weeks, obviously, a lot of work to be done. Um, and I uh, look forward to continuing to communicate about uh, updated figures. Thank you, Paul. Uh, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all the questions I have for right now. You're on mute, Joe. Oh, Alderman Muhammad, are you still with us? Alderman Muhammad, any questions? All right, uh, Alderman Oldem Oldenburg, any questions or comments? Oh uh, yeah, a few, thank you, Joe. Um, I, would, um, I would like to agree absolutely with Director Payne and 
Gerard, on the importance of the reserve fund. Um, the city's reserve fund um, is, is important to be strong because the city has a much greater operating budget um, than other offices, um, enterprise funds alike. When the city stands alone, um, its reserve needs to be bolstered. And I think to much credit of the budget director and the innovation of the departments, and quite frankly, this committee over the last few years, um, we've been able to build that back up from what, again, we thought was um, the worst recession our country's ever seen. Well, guess what? Correct. Um, you don't have to read the Wall Street Journal cover to cover to know that this thing is much grimmer than it appears in front of us right now. Um, I've got 15 years in, in professional commercial banking. Um, our economists are pulling their hair out in terms of uh, the limping that the economy is going to suffer for the next at least 18 months, likely 36. Um, and to, to, not, to not stay disciplined on a, on a reserve, um, I think is, is, not, is, is not being long, long viewed or long-term, which you need to be. It's, it's short-sighted to think the reserve can just be this match in and out and oh, the, the piggy bank um, will, stay, will stay flush. Um, and when I think it's important to, to look at when, when you're looking at where do we cut, how do we make improvements? To me, it comes down to life and property, right? If we have to switch things around, those are probably the two most important things that the city and that our residents would understand we want to protect is life and property. Um, so when it comes to the additional asks that I think are, have been before this committee, um, it's possible we could look at the, the breathing apparatuses for the firefighters and, and where can we get creative to try to protect that. Um, and is it possible to um, patch some amount of, whether it's grass cutting or other city assets that need to stay standing. Um, so those would be kind of the, my two, uh, what I would argue as important priorities when we're trying to balance. I do want to come back to what Alderman Vaccaro invoked the Capital Committee, Paul, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the source, the sourcing for the Capital Committee and Ward Capital basically is a sales tax that's split. Is that right? I mean, that's, effectively- that's the, that's the primary source. Yeah. Effectively, half of that sales tax goes to the Capital Committee, which has a five-year plan um, that, that looks to match that sourcing with the capital uses that, again, are overwhelming. Um, and the other half has gone to Ward Capital. So the Capital Committee made a conscious effort. Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, I couldn't find the minutes, but we basically deferred everything um, until we know what the bottom could look like for, for this recession and the lack of that sales tax revenue coming in. I think we, I think we did fund basically a, a portion of the Board of Public Service, right? Yeah. <laughs> we and and the debt service. And the debt service. And the debt service, debt service right? So, right. So protecting of debt so our creditors don't come after us. And of course, keeping, keeping the Board of Public Service, who is the engineering arm, checking what people do in our city, structurally and otherwise, um, employed and in place. So everything else was deferred. Now, it's possible we could open that up to try to help in terms of the breathing apparatus, but I think the board was pretty unanimous, that committee was pretty unanimous that, you know, without more information and understanding what scenario we're in, you, that's what you do in a recession. You defer any kind of CapEx um, that you're looking to spend or that you would have looking to spend. And unfortunately, and I know it's not politically, um, um, you know, helpful, but ward capital is just that. It's a capital uh, expense that you have to look at in the long term. It's not the ongoing operation in terms of city services. Residents are still receiving that baseline services. The trash is still getting picked up. Recycle bins are still getting picked up. But I think reasonable minds would, would be able to say, yeah, we're in the worst recession since the Great Depression, honestly. Um, I understand why capital is getting deferred. And to Paul Woman Murphy's point, $100,000 is still coming to each ward for some of the basics. And I know that's not helpful, and I know that sometimes um, can create um, 
a different perspective from our residents and constituents. But, and it's hard, right? It's hard to, to tell a resident how damn important the city's reserve fund is, but it is just that. It is of the utmost importance, um, would be my take. So, Paul, I had a question though, as long as we were talking about dipping in and out of, of the, the city's fund reserve. Did, in this budget, I, I know the mayor requested a um, million dollars to, to go to the affordable house, affordable housing trust fund. Did that take place? And is that represented in here? That is, that is in the budget. Um, what it was, was that our, from the reserves for that, correct? It is, it, we were, it's pulled from the contribution that we would be making in FY21. So if, if remember when I talked about reserves, I said, okay, the contribution we are, to the reserve. That's right, which was I about three three point four, and we're so now it's at two point four. I understand. Okay, okay. So yes, I mean it is from the reserve because that would have been that was earmarked for for the reserve. Right. Okay. So and, and I thought and even that I mean this is a million dollars and we're a billion dollar city even that I thought was was not the most responsible maneuver and and again I I understand how affordable you know how important the affordable housing trust fund is um, so. Um, I just want to let the committee know where I am. I'm going to be hesitant to support any any movement of uh, the the reserve fund. And I do know that we're talking now as if five million dollars will be transferred and come. But you know, perhaps perhaps after we get new revenue um, new revenues in and we have an outlook on 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 real revenues at the end of this month and we actually receive a transfer of five million which has to be uh, i think final pass tomorrow um maybe there's an opportunity to to reevaluate if revenues have come in a little higher than we are to carve off some of that or at least revisit the conversation to then bring a little bring a little pork back to the wards in terms of um you know the, the capital improvements uh, of our neighborhoods uh so that's i'm just want to let the committee know that's where i would stand on that and I have no further questions or comments. All right, thank you, Alderman. Uh, Alderwoman Boyd, are you still with us? Uh, I see, Alderwoman Boyd. Right. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have any questions at this time. All right. Okay. Uh, before I chime in, uh, I believe Gerard sent me a text. Paul, he had a question of you. If that's fine with you. Sure. All right, hey, Gerard, Paul. proceed. Hey, Paul, just really quickly. Are there anything, any agencies that are outside the budget? I'm thinking kind of the convention center that if if they were to get into financial trouble, the city would have to step in. I know the convention center right now has really doesn't have revenue coming in because of the hotel tax. And obviously we're the primary owner of the convention center. Are there things out there like that that could come back on us? Well, that's a possibility. I, I know that's been discussed, but I, I have not seen an ask yet on, on that. Uh, um, Right now, as, as it, our annual obligation of the convention center maintenance, convention center has been the annual maintenance of $2 million per year, which is budgeted uh, as usual. Um, but yeah, the, 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 I know the CDC is running uh, short, on cash, short on cash. And so uh, their uh, consideration of their op, uh, of the management costs associated with the convention center could, could come back. Uh, obviously, um, I don't think that's something that's going to be a, a necessarily a general fund obligation, but uh, it is something that uh, the city would have to consider uh, into how we bridge however long this patch is going to be for uh, low revenues to keep that operation uh, uh, sound. But I, I, I don't want to speculate on that, though. I haven't seen any uh, numbers uh, specifically on that. Okay, thank you. All right, that'd be it. Okay. All right. Uh, Paul, now, so you're, we're waiting. I have a follow up. Uh, one, one second, Joe. I haven't had a chance to talk okay. to Paul myself. Okay. I've, I received your text, but I, so my understanding is that uh, there's reports, and specifically from Jeff City coming in, that could change everything we've even discussed for the past week and throw it all 
all asunder. Is that correct? That uh, everything we were even talking about could just be. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Um, the, the, the reports I'm referring to is just there are regular revenue update okay. that would be getting for the month. Part of that is sales tax, which we get from the state. So we wait for that. Report. Okay. So there's no other hidden report from the state from Jeff City coming. No, well, okay. I know I, that, that's just one source of revenue, which is sales tax that we get from the state. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe I'm a, I was having a conversation with someone. I, they said something to that effect and I was unaware. So I wanted to make sure about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Alderman Vicar, you had uh, you wanted to I, I do. comment? Yeah, I do. I want Lou to answer, but he sent me this, and there's nothing that we would have to amend. And if we're amending that ordinance to allow for this, this could happen even in the future. I, I would like Lou to actually come on as a, our legal advisor to give us all the same opinion he's given me, which I had texted to you, which says, that when it comes to like right now, there's been no ordinance to supersede the change, let any change happen. Uh, although I'm reading this very quickly, I'd like him to come on because the other thing, if we amend an ordinance to say, gee, do what you want, I think that also is going to take, uh, give them um, an open hand to do whatever they want in the future. So I would, would like a legal opinion. And he's there somewhere because obviously he's watching. Lou, are you online? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you. So uh, if you uh, would like to state your opinion, uh, we'll listen to that and let Paul and Gerard comment on it as they see fit. Sure, sure. The, um, the sales tax is authorized by, the sales tax, which is for the capital improvements, is authorized by, by state statute. It's 94577. Um, it says that those monies are to go to capital improvements, but then it also specifies that those monies may be used to retire authorized bonded indebtedness. Um, that statute also sets out the ballot question that's supposed to go to the people. And it says author, you know, it says for capital improvements and for uh, retiring uh, authorized bonded indebtedness. So, so that was outlined by the voters. However, the ordinance um, sending that to the voters and directing how those funds are to be used does not specify that it can be used to retire bonded indebtedness. But obviously that ordinance may be amended. Did, did, did everybody hear that or? So I guess, I guess. I'm sure we all heard it, Pat. I like Paul. Any comments on that, or? Yeah, I, I, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Is basically you, you were saying we've we've identified this uh, source of funds per this ordinance, the sales tax ordinance. Notwithstanding that particular ordinance, in the fiscal 21, we are allocating it towards this purpose, and it's consistent with the the, the sales tax that is for capital, but it's for citywide capital and and, and, and such. That is the not, notwithstanding language which is utilized. Now, again, and, and to, to address Alderman Vaccaro's issue, that's a decision that you all have to make. I mean, that, that's that, uh, if you believe that's a higher priority than any others, but then if, if that's the case, then you, you make a recommendation and, and uh, follow through with some other reduction somewhere else or, or, or what have you. But that's how it's presented in the budget. Uh, Karen Bulmer? Good. Um, I, I'd also like to add that um, the charter requires, if, if it is the, the city's intent, which what it appears to be to use the budget bill to uh, amend the, um, the capital improvements bill ordinance, um, I do not see where it meets the charter requirement of having the, the ordinance or section of the ordinance um, to be amended and how it is being amended set forth in full. Um, that's Article 4, Section 12 of the Charter, um, but it's a big bill. <laughs> so if it's in there, I, I didn't find it, and maybe somebody could direct it. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so it's... I, I would like to further comment, Joe, that... Sure, go ahead, Joseph. That by doing this, then you better be prepared for next year, the year after, the year after, and the year after, that they will cut the ward capital. It's been in the media. They're not happy that 
they say, oh, the aldermen are sitting on millions and millions of dollars. I'm sitting on less than $1,000. I can't even do matching funds to use the park funds. And once we allow this, and I guarantee you, the public will not be happy, but once we allow this, then we're opening the door and maybe I'm wrong, Lou, but we're changing this now. We're gonna let them do whatever and they're gonna twist this. So just if, if we don't stand up for this now, it's my opinion that we will not be having ward capital in the future for any future older people. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I think that not standing up for this and this is standing up for the voters, then what the voters intended to vote on is wrong. And if anybody wants to vote against the, the, what, what I believe, that's fine. But I'm telling you, the public was made clear. And once we open that box and say, we okay, we're fine, do whatever, it'll never stop. And mayors, not only just this mayor, but mayors in the future uh, will just say, gee, you know what? Uh, we, we, we were not challenged, so we're, you know, we're going to amend this in this ordinance according to what Lou is saying, which opens up a, uh, 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 for the future that we, you know, um, you know, we're just, we're changing, we should just go away from, you know, we're, we're going away from the Board of Aldermen. They, 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 there's always been proposals to do away with our right to name a street or do anything that we need a city manager. Let's just give away all the rights of the citizens. I'm, I'm not well, gonna I, keep talking about this, but well, it's well, my opinion. Okay, Joe, it's, okay. It's again, we're not making thing. any decisions today. We're, we're well informed of your opinion on this. Uh, okay. We're gonna, well, that's today, fine, so oh. we're just going around trying to get comments today. Uh, Tuesday is gonna well, be kind of the, the day we're gonna do this because we still have public opinion day on Saturday. So that, I think we, my, we are well aware of your comments. opinion. Okay. That's my comments. We, Thank, right. you. Thank you very much. Is there anything else anyone wants to weigh in with before we, uh, we Mr. Adjourn? Chairman? Yes, yes, Madam Vice. Could we go back and see if Alderman Muhammad and Alderwoman Oh, yeah, Boyd... I'm sorry, yeah. We had, uh, well, first, Alderwoman uh, Hubbard, are you back? Tamika? I, she was I am. After... Oh. I am. I'm, I'm sorry. I had okay. My... I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Madam Vice. I got lost there in, in, in the... Okay. In the virtues of Mr. Vaccaro speaking, my head just was everywhere. <laughs> so we, well, we still have input from uh, Alderman Hubbard and uh, Alderman Muhammad and Alderman Pam Boyd. So I'll, Tamika, please uh, feel free. Um, I, I'll be totally honest. I'm kind of drained at the moment. These <laughs> meetings are uh, very draining. My brain is frozen. Um, And I guess today we were hearing more uh, testimony from Paul Payne, uh, I'll just say that um, I don't want to really beat on it, but my biggest concern about um, everything is I, I know we have budget constraints. I know that, you know, people need their money, but that capital improvement money, that's that's a biggie for me. And I, it's my hope that we can um, find something somewhere to... Uh, to make sure that we get those dollars because we all know it's, it's not a, a lot of money that we received. And, and for the last 10 or 11 years, I've been banking money to um, assist with major projects because th that gap that you fill in, that that's the only way you can get stuff done in my community. But I mean, I know we got projections and they are very dismal, but one thing I learned just from being on Ways and Means, and I haven't been on here this long. I didn't want to be on here because you all meet too much. But mm -hmm. um, I I know that there's always some fat somewhere. I mean, there's always some fat that can be trimmed. And I, I think that we need to um, just study long and hard on how can we make sure that we get some money to these wards. Because it, the, the three or $400,000, it's, it's not very much money at all anyway. And then you pay, you know, a few blocks and that's $100,000 and then the utilities come back and dig it up. So it's just, it's issues across the board with it, but I um, share the same sentiments uh, with my colleague in regards to the war capital. That like, that's my biggie right now. I know we've had to cut some things out of public safety and other departments. Uh, the circuit attorney definitely needs some of the money 
but there's still so many gray areas on how this money um, is moving and how it can be used. And then you put it in one place and then they pull it out. And, you know, there's uh, monies that have been allocated to certain departments that have not been used. I feel that we need to do a thorough um, look into where, where the money is to figure out how we can get some money back to those boards. And I, I will stand firm on that. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alderman. And Alderman Muhammad, are you back with us? Mr. Chairman, I am. I just I was just sending a message to the, to the group. Uh, I'm getting ready to sign off. My biggest concern is more capital. I think that it would be um, a little perplexing to me that if we pass a budget that takes out the most essential part of of our duties as aldermen, uh, serving our respective wards, uh, our communities rely on that money. Uh, I will not vote for a budget that does not include ward capital. That's just me personally, uh, just just on principle. Uh, understanding that this budget is a little different than past years because of the, the because of the pandemic, but um, we can find the money, and if we have to go into the reserves to do it, I think we should. Uh, if we if we take that five million that we that we have. Uh, courtesy of Alderman Boyd from the uh, Treasurer's Office, the Parking Division, and if we can find another 3.4 million to fully fund ward capital, I think that is in the best interest of our constituents uh, in our wards that we do so. That is my biggest concern, uh, 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 Mr. Chairman and Mr. Director. All right, thank you, Alderman. And last of all, uh, not heard from yet, uh, Alderman Boyd. Any comments or questions? Damn. Alderman Boyd? Can you hear me? I yeah. can hear you now. Go, please proceed. You're breaking up. Now you're not there. You're kind of frozen on the picture. And don't everybody sing uh, Let It Go. Uh, now. Pam? Okay. You're in and out. Can you hear me, Alderman Bomber? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Because I don't know what's going on. I keep having people froze and I can't hear, but uh, I just feel that, and I had kind of text Alderman Bomber because I kept getting cut in and out, but I just wanted everybody to understand. I think we're in a devastating area right now, even with the pandemic, which is adding to the issues, we were looking at going upward and now we're doubling back. And so it's just like it's your house. When your money's cut short, you got to look at other ways to uh, make sure that you can do the basics. And I agree with people when they say we need to look at the, the basics, the safety and the uh, of the residents is the number one priority. This year is a very learning year. I've been learning more, but I've been asking more questions and reading. So it's real devastating to me. And I don't think people realize that the situation the city is in financially. When you don't have the ball games, the, the blues, you don't have these major attractions coming in to bring those dollars. That's hurting us in a big way. And so I agree with my colleagues. We need to really study the budget and see the important needs that needs to be addressed. As you know, sometimes you say what you want and what you need are two different things. So I think this committee needs to look at what we need as a city to keep us halfway stable. And that's all I had. All right, thank you all the one. We've heard from everybody on the one time around, some twice. Uh, is there anybody has any final comments to, before we wrap up today? And. Uh, Take all this into your belt, and hopefully we'll learn something from the public on Saturday uh, that will help us out in this situation. Any final comments? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Madam Vice. Uh, I wanted to share with our committee members that on Saturday, 
our meeting is to listen, not to uh, condemn anybody on their comments. It's not to argue a point. It is to listen and gather information. I think that's the best way for us to spend our time. Uh, I've also, in the announcement for that meeting on Saturday, I've asked people to email questions and or their comments to us. So we'll have them uh, as, uh, as part of our record. And also, um, we want to make sure that the public has the time to use, not us. It's about the public on Saturday. So I thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Vice. Uh, with no further hands raised, Paul, I thank you very much for your time today. Uh, we'll see you again on Tuesday, I believe. And then Gerard, uh, you also, Lou, members of the committee. Bye. Thank you. I know this is uh, uh, long, 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 but hopefully you can, <laughs> Tamika will ease your brain by Wednesday, we're hoping. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you. Mine too, thank I you. hope. <laughs> okay. With that, I'll entertain a motion oh, wow. to adjourn. All right. So All right. All right. Second. 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 All right. We have a second. Thank you very much. With that, we will adjourn and see everyone on uh, Tuesday morning, or I'm sorry, Saturday morning. If I can make it, I will be. I have a little busy day, so I'll, but uh, Madam Vice will be in charge. So be on your toes. She's meaner than I am. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right. Meeting adjourned. Bye bye. -bye.